is one of the world's richest mans and the main reason that about 40% of my credit card bill says Amazon on it. Jeff Bezos is famous for not only companies like Amazon, but also companies such as Blue Origin, Altos Labs, and the Washington Post. And there's no denying when it comes to entrepreneurship, he's amazing in his reasoning and his critical skills, but how would he use those to dominate medical school? And so in this episode, I'm gonna break down this exact principle that Jeff Bezos himself says makes him successful and how he would use those to transfer in a setting like medical school. You guys enjoyed our last few episodes on how big names like Elon Musk and Albert Einstein would use their principles to succeed in medical school. And so if you guys are enjoying this series, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe, but let's get into the episode. So principle number one is to adapt to the Amazon-like harmony. Jeff Bezos is a big proponent of having balance in our busy and hectic life. In fact, he says, quote, if I'm happy at home, I come into the office with tremendous energy. And if I'm happy at work, I come at home with tremendous energy. In medical school, you can argue that this work-life balance really just circles around work. We work on our studies. We work on our efficiency. We work on developing our extracurriculars, our personal wellness to be, again, better in medical school. We work on the connections that we have with our classmates. We work on networking and shadowing, but everything surrounds around how good of a medical student we can be. But every one of these things is spent on working on the medical student version of you and not just you. And so one thing I learned early on in medical school is for me to be both happy and successful in both as a student as well as my personal life, I had to have things outside of medical school to feel like I had some work-life balance. And for me personally, those included things like weightlifting, running, as well as growing and running a business. And so really take a second to ask yourself, one, do I really have school life balance? And two, are the things that I really am considering to be part of my balance actually contributing to just me or are they contributing to the medical school me? And if you're in the latter group, you need to start asking yourself what type of things you can have outside of your medical school box that can help you have tremendous energy both inside and out. Now, principle number two is to focus on the right part of the flywheel. Now in business, there's a concept that I really enjoy that companies like Amazon have made famous that is called the flywheel. And to better understand the principle, imagine a huge wheel that you have to push. And because of the enormous size of the wheel on your very first push, nothing's really gonna happen. And as you add another push here or there, or as you push at different parts of the wheel, it's gonna move just a little bit, but eventually it's going to get to the part where it's going to do one revolution, and then two, and then four, and then 16. And eventually the wheel itself starts to move using momentum without you really having to contribute more and more pushes to it. Companies run by Bezos, including Amazon, are great examples of flywheel in action. And to help understand, okay, well, if I have a big challenge like medical school in my way, how do I guarantee one, that it moves and two, that it actually becomes easier to move as I go down along the process. When asked about successes in his company like Amazon, Jeff Bezos basically says that they always focus on the center of the flywheel, which for them is the customer. And he says, quote, focus on the customer, not competition. And this is exactly why as a company that Amazon focuses on all of their decisions to help improve their customer satisfaction. And each of the businesses that Jeff Bezos runs, he understands that one step in itself isn't gonna move the wheel, but each step is going to feed into the next one, which is going to make revolution so much easier. And to tie this back into medical school, here's an example of what a very simple medical school flywheel would be. Step number one, improve your study system and gain more free time. Step number two, use your free time to enjoy your personal hobbies, build your CV, and grow your medical knowledge. Step number three, reflect on all the great experiences you've had in that free time that you now gained. Step number four, be motivated and focus on being even more efficient to get even more free time. And this cycle will continue and continue as the student becomes more efficient, has more free time, is able Able to devote their free time for more successful things that is going to keep them more motivated and happy on the journey and the process continues over and over again. Now in this concept it's important to understand that there's no real starting point. You don't necessarily just jump in with the free time you have and throw in extra CVs and hobbies. Instead you have to ask yourself what many systems do I have along each part of the journey. So for instance if we go back to the flywheel that we created we can create a mini system for each step along the flywheel. So for example for step number one if you want to improve your study system you want to ask yourself okay what grades did I get and what changes do I need to make on a weekly basis to help get those grades in a more efficient time scale. If you guys are interested in how to do this, there's a free course called the Study Rehab, which is three steps on exactly how to do this on a week to week basis. Next, we go back to our flywheel and we'll go to step two and your mini system to increase your free time can ask yourself, okay, what free time do I have? And how do I use that free time to finish current projects and discover new interests to help me on my career goal? Maybe I can reflect on this on a monthly basis. Step number three and four include reflecting on your great experiences as well as focusing on where you're being inefficient. So maybe you can have a daily exercise of asking yourself, what you're grateful for and great experiences you've had, as well as asking yourself, what moves do you want to make towards forward progress? So you can imagine how the student using this flywheel has something on their daily, their weekly, and their monthly calendar to help improve each aspect of it, to make the flywheel even more effective, to make the experience one where they have better grades, more free time, and more happiness. And if all that sounds good, but you're not really sure how to put this together in your own journey, if you are interested in working with me directly one-on-one, -on -one, click at the link down below to check out our Medic Night program to see how we help students get both better grades, more free time, and more happiness using our one-on-one coaching.
Now, principle number three is to begin each day with the determination to be better. So one of my favorite graphs in the world has to be this one. And this figure appropriately titled as the power of tiny gains shows the importance of either becoming 1% better or 1% worse over a span of a year. And this figure is taken from James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, and says that you can either become 37 times more effective or 97% worse in one year. You pick what you do each and every day. In the same way, Jeff Bezos breaks down these principles for all of these companies. For example, in Amazon, he says, quote, be better for our customers, our employees, employees, our partners, and the world. Amazon and Jeff Bezos are a perfect example of this 1% better every single day. Now, not all of the changes are winners, but the desire to become better lead to things such as two-day shipping, one-day shipping, same-day delivery shipping, Amazon Fresh, and so many more aspects of Amazon and Jeff Bezos companies that now have existed. And so bringing this back into medical school, someone as successful as Jeff Bezos would one, take the approach of making sure that each and every single day there is a focus to improve, regardless whether it's on their academic, so that includes improving their studying, their productivity, their focus or their personal life, whether it includes their wellness or their relationships or their happiness, or number three, whether that includes their future goals. So improving their CVs, their networking, and their knowledge of that future field that they're trying to go into. But make sure that wherever you are on your journey, that you end every day knowing that, yes, I did more than I did yesterday. And tomorrow I have the chance of even becoming better. Principle number four is to focus on long-term thinking. Now, this is by no means a new principle to any of us, but if you think about how little we focus on this, using one simple example, when we go into medical school, there's usually a desire desire to go help people, but then we become so focused on just the next multiple choice exam. And as we go through this process, we typically stop caring about whether we actually know the information a month from now, several months from now, or a year from now. We just want to do well again for that one multiple choice exam. But on the flip side, somebody as successful as Chef Bezos would make sure that each of his decisions were made to help him both in the short and long term. As he says regarding Amazon, quote, we invest for the long term and we continually refine and improve our offerings based on customer feedback. Going back to the principle of being 1% better every day, Jeff Bezos understands that some of his company decisions may not be successes, but the desire to know that 1% may cause him to have more long-term success is worth it. In the same respect as medical students, sometimes we need to take a step back and say, what is my long-term goal with all of this that I'm currently doing? If you're learning about a specific topic in medicine, it's not really about the multiple choice exam because I promise you from personal experience, you're not going to remember those individual grades, but you will remember how much you actually don't remember. And to explain that, every time I'm in the lecture now, I was like, man, I know I learned this as a medical student, but I focus way too much on trying to get the best grade possible instead of actually trying to understand this for the long term. And so look at each and every one of your encounters from a long term view. Each patient encounter, attending teaching session, each experience, each lecture, those can be memories that you rely on to help you with your future goal of being an amazing physician. And the biggest lesson for me is when I have my long term perspective on some of those experiences where I initially thought this is probably going to be insignificant to my future, I can look at them from a brand new lens and then they actually become part of my long term story, both in my academic and personal career. Next, principle number five is to hang out with resourceful people. Now, this is a common theme from some of our other episodes in the series, including Elon Musk. So if you haven't checked out that episode, it'll be right up here or linked down below in the description. But Jeff Bezos says that, quote, life's too short to hang out with people who aren't resourceful. Medical school and the medical journey has such a great opportunity for you to help build your circle of influence on people that you can rely on to help learn and propel yourself forward. These include your peers, your friends, as well as your residents, your attendings, and your patients. And nowadays, you can use and learn from people you'll never meet using social media such as YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or Reddit, and simply ask yourself, what have people in my shoes told me to do or not to do to improve my chances of more success? People as successful as Jeff Bezos have understood that even when things are going well in companies as big as Amazon, it's important to have people in their circle of influence that can continue to help propel them forward. And so it doesn't matter on your medical journey if you're either doing well or you're currently in a slump, it's important to look at your circle of influence and say, what would they do if they were currently in my shoes? So once you understand what your circle of influence will do, make sure you actually apply that knowledge, give feedback, and then go back to your circle of influence to continue the propelling system and that flywheel each and every single day. Now, Jeff Bezos is by no means done succeeding in this world, and that includes both success in Amazon as well as out of the world success in companies like Blue Origin. But hopefully you can see how some of these principles which have led him to become considered one of the most successful people in human history can help you succeed in something as simple yet as complex as medical school. And out of all these principles that we talked about today, I think the one that resonates with me the most is the flywheel concept because I start to look at each and every aspect of my life including medical school, being a resident, having a business, having a YouTube channel, asking myself, what are small steps in each and every one of these that I can improve on to become better each and every day? And so if you are on your medical journey and you feel like you're either stuck or moving backwards and you finally want that sense of progress, definitely consider some of the programs down below, including the Medic Night Coaching Program and the Meta Elite Coaching Program, depending on if you want a one-on-one -on -one versus a group coaching experience. Both of those programs have been highly reviewed by our current and past students. I'll link those down below in case you want to see what reviews and experiences our past students have. But with that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode on how Jeff 
faces would dominate a medical school? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. What did I miss? What did I get wrong? If you did enjoy this video, if you made it to the very end, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button down below, subscribe and notification bell. If you're listening to this on a podcast, definitely consider hitting that follow and subscribe on your favorite platform. And if you enjoyed this episode, then you likely enjoyed this episode on how Elon Musk would study in medical school, as well as this one on how Albert Einstein would study in medical school. So be a genius like these two. Enjoy the video. Thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I'll help you guys and yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.